So, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about the time that I ran into my ex-husband being just a long time friend. I hadn't seen him in about 10 years and I was sitting at a bar drinking a drink, um, not paying any attention to my uh, environment. I was just, you know, it was my birthday weekend and I just, you know, wanted to let my hair down and drink a glass of my favorite wine and all of a sudden he says, Stacy, is that you? And I turned around and I looked at him, I was just like, Daryl, what? Hi, how you been? You know, and we hugged each other and it was like happy to see each other. And he's like, oh my goodness, you have not changed. You look the same. You still got that pretty long hair. Oh, girl, and you still look good. You, oh, girl, you look good. Of course, you know, I'm like, hey. <laughs> and, um. So he asked me for my numbers, said I want to keep in touch with you, and we talked. Stayed on the phone for hours, even after I got home, and we talked and we talked and talked. And he was just so happy to talk to me. He said, "You know what? I let you go before. I bet you I won't let you go this time. You're gonna be my wife." I'm like so, for whatever. He goes to commence to say, "I mean, you know, I've always thought you were pretty. You know, you have that long." beautiful hair and like he said baby you said your hair is all it's always been pretty and that's true you know my hair had been pretty pretty I mean I had long hair ever since I can remember and you know people would always conversate about my hair converse about my hair that was always the conversation starter you know so I was used to people always complimenting me in my hair but I had this secret that nobody knew yet fast forward he and I get married. Oh, happy and happy, happy were we. And I'm still holding on to this secret. I'm like, how do I tell this man that this hair in my head isn't mine? That I'm wearing weaves. Because he always talked about my hair. Every time he would describe me to people, he would always say, my baby is so fine. My baby is so pretty. She got the longest, prettiest hair, man. My baby got long hair. It ain't fake like these other women's hair. But the fact is, I did have tracks in my head. He just didn't know about them. They were like around here. I had hair, and it was long, and it was down to my shoulders. Well, I live with this secret. I wouldn't tell him. I wouldn't tell my family. I wouldn't tell anybody because I was ashamed. I was embarrassed to talk about the fact that my hair was leaving me. I remember when I went to the doctor, I went to this dermatologist and I said, you know, something's wrong with my hair. Something's not right. And he diagnosed me with alopecia. And I'm like, alopecia? What is alopecia? See, I had been diagnosed given this diagnosis this diagnosis about three years before I met my husband. And at the time I'm thinking this dermatologist don't know what he's talking about. Alopecia who black people don't have alopecia. What is alopecia? Alopecia what? Like this white man don't know what he's talking about. He gave me this pamphlet. The pamphlet showed a woman with no hair. Eyebrows and eyelashes missing. I'm like, this fool got me twisted. He don't know nothing about black skin. How ignorant was I? How ignorant was I? <laughs> anyway, fast forward, I remember my hair thinning, and I would do anything to keep my husband from knowing the truth. I was not going to share it with him that I had alopecia. After all, he loved my hair. My hair was everything to him. My hair to him was beauty. So, out of fear, I refused to let him know that my hair was not my hair. And I went to the beautician every single week getting tracks in my head to make sure that he would never know that I didn't have 
but this hair was fine. You see, bun in my hair, it was long. Here, it was long. It was very long. You can feel in my head. You wouldn't feel no tracks because, see, my alopecia started right here in the center of my head. So whenever he would pull my hair and rub my hair all through my hair, all through my scalp and pull my hair, make love to me, he never felt tracks. So I lived that lie until I couldn't live it anymore. You see, my hair started falling out more and more and more, and I couldn't hide it anymore. So I decided that I'm going to start wearing wigs so he won't know. He went off on me and he said, wigs are for old women. My wife would not wear a wig. I was too ashamed to go to the petition anymore because that spot had gotten wider. But yet I still had hair all around here. So you know what I did? I, I put my hair up. I, I, I put it in a ponytail. I wore ponytails. Okay, I stopped going to the petition. I wore ponytails all the time. So he still never knew that I didn't have, he never knew that I had alopecia still. But then we ended up getting a divorce and the spots started spreading. I could no longer hide the spots because now I didn't have hair to pull back to cover the bald spot anymore. I went into a deep depression. I didn't love myself anymore. My husband left me. I didn't have my husband anymore. My hair was leaving. And here I am single again. No man will want me. No man is going to love me. My husband don't love me anymore. I went in a deep depression. I didn't love myself. I went to work. I come home. I went to work. I came home. Every day, I would come home, take this wig off my head, put it back on the next day to go to work. I stopped being sociable. I wouldn't go anywhere because I was afraid if I meet somebody, and normally I would always meet somebody. I would always run into somebody, a man that says, oh, you are so gorgeous, you are so beautiful. Can I have your number? No, I'm not dating. I don't want to date. Because if I get close to you, then you're going to find out that I have alopecia. Because at this time, I wasn't wearing wigs anymore. I was just wearing wigs. So how can I make love to a man without the fear of my wig coming off my head? No, I was not taking that chance. I was not going to date. I was not going to let a man get close to me. So one night... God come to me and he woke me up and he said, Stacy, get out that bed and quit feeling sorry for yourself. Your hair does not define you. Your hair does not define you. <laughs> like, okay, God, is that what you say? But baby, no. Society says hair matters. Society says you have to have straight hair. Society says straight hair is beautiful. Society says hair is beautiful. I'm not beautiful. I don't love myself anymore. But one day, I woke up. And I went to my brother. You know, I said, after a very hot summer, I said, I can't do this no more. I can't continue to wear wigs on my head no more. I'm not going to do this anymore. It's too hot. I refuse to do this. So I got my brother, told him take these clippers and shave the rest of this off my head. Because up under this wig, up under this wig was patches of hair. Not much to talk about. I had this big old bozo bold spot in my head and random bald spots on the side of my head. I said I'm no more. If a man's going to love me, he's going to love me. But you know, I still wasn't really that brave. I talked a good game. Clippers he took to my head and he shaved my head. I still wore wigs. I still wasn't ready to let the world know that I have no hair anymore. I hadn't even told my family yet that I don't have hair. 
Did I have alopecia? I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. Because, you know, I remember one time when my grandmother told me that a woman's hair is a glory. I remember one time I cut my hair for the first time because I had always had long hair and I wanted to try something different. So I got the Halle Berry haircut. I was 24 then. My grandmother gave me the blues. Walk around looking like a boy. What's wrong with you? Wow. So if she cannot accept me with a low, sexy, Halle Berry haircut, my grandmother is not going to accept me with a bald head. How can I go before my family and let them know I don't have hair anymore? How? I don't know. I can't remember when exactly that I decided that I can't do this anymore. I remember going on YouTube and I was telling them about my decision to finally cut the rest of my hair and I had all this support and I was like wow and I had other ladies coming to me thanking me for making that move because they needed that huh, wow I realized there are more women like myself who were feeling sorry for themselves who were depressed to finally love yourself again I love me hair does not define me I'm still beautiful. So I sent a picture to my mother and my sister of me bald. They accepted me. What do you know? They accepted me. They didn't talk about me. They didn't look down at me. They weren't embarrassed. So you know what? I got rid of that wig. I gained self-love self-confidence and empowerment this is the true me and you know there were probably a bunch of there was a few guys that were out was attractive to me and thought I was very good-looking and sexy or whatever you may and a few of those guys probably looked at me like I wouldn't dare date a bald woman I wouldn't dare date a bald woman but you know what that's okay because you missed out because the same woman before this hair loss is the same woman I am I can cook I'm a good woman and guess what the real man the man that was for me the man that was for me who loved me loved me despite not having hair you understand me he loves me for me the right one for me loves me He's not about what's on my head. He's loved me despite what's on my head, what's not on my head. He loves me. He loves what's inside of me. He loves my pretty smile. He loves my bald head. He shaves my bald head. He loves me. Once I didn't love me, but now I do. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. It's time to love you too. God doesn't punish no one. God makes no mistake. I am thankful that he allowed me to go through this journey of self-love because I thought I loved me, but it wasn't until I lost my hair that I really truly stopped loving me. When I see your face, not a thing that I would change. Cause you're amazing Just the way you are When you smile The whole world stops and stands for a while It's girl you're amazing Just the way you are